If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to solve this question, we're going to consider the so-called impulse momentum theorem. And in that theorem, we know that the impulse J is equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. It turns out that J, the impulse, can be written in a different way. As the integral from the initial to final times of a force function. Now we are given a force function in graphical form, and it turns out that we recall from calculus that the integral of a function is equivalent to the area underneath the curve of that function. So in order to evaluate this integral, we would simply have to find the area underneath the curve. Now we actually won't need to use calculus for that because if we look carefully, we can see that the area under the curve is partitioned up into nice geometrical figures. We would have a triangle from zero to two milliseconds, a rectangle from two to four, and then another triangle from four to six. So what we're going to do on the left side of this equation is set up the areas of those three shapes because those areas will ultimately correspond to the impulse. So as noted, the first geometrical shape will be this triangle right here. And of course, we know the area of a triangle is one half times the base times the height. The base of that triangle is two milliseconds. Note that you'll have to multiply it by 10 to the minus three to convert it into seconds. And then the height of that triangle is represented by F max, which we don't know. And in fact, we're trying to solve for it. So we can label that F max. We're then going to add the area of the rectangle, which has a base of two milliseconds and a height of F max. So multiplying that base times the height would give the area of that rectangle. And then we have a triangle that's actually congruent to the first triangle. So we're gonna have one half times the two milliseconds times the height of F max again. Now recall that we're setting that equal to the final momentum minus the initial momentum. So at this point, it might be helpful to replace the momentum terms with the mass times the final velocity. That would give us the final momentum minus the initial momentum, which can be written as mass times the initial velocity. And in fact, the question gives us the mass. It says that it's 58 grams. Of course, we'll have to convert that into kilograms. And then for the final and initial velocities, we note that the initial velocity of the ball is 34 meters per second in the negative direction of an x axis. So that means that the initial velocity will have to be represented as negative 34 meters per second. And then for the final velocity, we are told that the ball rebounds directly back with approximately the same speed. So that means that the final velocity is going to be positive 34 meters per second because it's rebounded in the opposite direction. And then we'll fill in the mass as well. To save some room, we've actually factored the mass out into the front of the right-hand side of the equation. For the left-hand side, why don't we pick up our calculators and simplify these uh, like terms. We can actually first multiply all the coefficients of f max and then add them together since they're all like terms. And when you do that, you should get 0 0.004 times f max. We can also simplify the right-hand side now. And then finally, we can divide both sides of the equation by the 0 0.004. And when you do so, F max turns out to be 986 newtons. And then in scientific notation, we can write that as approximately 9.9 .9 .9 times 10 to the power of two newtons. So that would be the final and correct answer. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe to the channel so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address on the screen, and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.